exam free. All right, so I'm going to go through, I'm going to highlight what you'll need to know for this exam. Uh, important facts, important things to remember. Stop me if you have any questions. You want me to go over something again. All right, are you ready to go? First, nucleic acids, a very short portion on nucleic acids. Know your definitions of nucleosides, nucleotides, and nucleic acids. This is purely definition. You do not have to memorize any of the bases for this one. So that quiz covered that part. However, I am going to make you draw one nucleic acid, probably like on the practice problem, probably like three bases long, the nucleic acid structure. I will give you the bases as a cut and paste. So I'll say, draw me an A, G, C of DNA. You have to be able to put together the, um, the ribose phosphate backbone, and then I'll give you pictures of adenine, guanine, etc. All you have to do is redraw them and attach them correctly. All right, so you don't have to draw adenine, guanine, thymine, etc. <coughs> All right. Do you know your differences between? Yes. If I ask for DNA, you're going to use deoxy. If I ask for RNA, you're going to use oxygen. Obviously. Yes. So pay attention. If I say DNA strand or if I say RNA strand. Okay? And again, that leads into know your differences between DNA and RNA. Structural, the main difference, the real uno difference is that two prime hydroxyl <coughs> that changes its stability, which therefore changes its function. And then in addition, DNA is usually double-stranded, RNA is single-stranded, and the base usage, A, G, C, and T versus A, G, C, and U for RNA. That's it, I'm not gonna make you do transcription, translation, any of that. Um, I'll just make you do five plus three. I'll just give you five plus three, just like you would a, a, a protein chain. I'll say N to C, like I would say N to C for a peptide. You'll I'll just make you do N uh, five to three. Or, uh, but remember, don't forget what's always on that five prime carbon. I mean, it's five prime hydroxyl. It's always three phosphates. Okay, don't just draw me one phosphate. It's got to be three. They always have three at the end. Okay, going forward. That's it. No, don't worry about transcription, translation. I'm not really going to. Uh, I'm not going to dig into that. Um, moving into metabolism, metabolism versus catabolism. You know the definitions of those two terms. You know the energy, either use or release. So metabolism uses energy. Catabolism often releases energy. So that's the that's the whole theme of metabolism. Um, for phosphate compounds, the delta G of hydrolysis, uh, phosphate transfer reactions, I'm going to give you a goal reaction. Your job is to, based on delta Gs of hydrolysis that are given, determine the overall delta G for that goal reaction. So that means write out the two reactions, flip the appropriate one, add them, determine spontaneous or not. Yes? Will we have to know any of those going into the exam? Will we have to know any of the delta Gs? Just ATP. You must memorize ATP. Everything else I will give you. ATP is negative 30. You must memorize ATP. Okay? And I can make it either a, long, a short answer or a multiple choice. It's kind of my choice. Um, everybody's like, oh, multiple choice, so it's easier. Except I know how you do it wrong. So I will put the wrong answer on there, and you'll be like, oh, I got it. Okay. So it actually might be a little trickier to do it. On, on multiple choice than short answer. Yes? Well, I mean, in order to solve the problem, you have to write out the the, phosphate, the, the delta G of hydrolysis reactions. And then you have to, uh, based on those two and the goal, know which one to flip, and then add, and then change the sign of that one and add those. So in order, it's a multi-step, it's kind of a multi-step process to get that answer. You have to write out the reactions, flip the appropriate one, and change its sign, 
and then add those, those two values. Yeah? Which one is the one you're supposed to flip? Whichever one is backwards. So if I give, <coughs> uh, what kind of I'll do it here. If I give glucose 6 phosphate plus ADP gives ATP plus, you don't know, let me do it the other way. Let's do, does everybody think the average is flip ATP? If I give you a delta G of hydrolysis for G6P, and of course you know what it is for ATP, you should be able to write out these reactions. And of course you write their delta G next to them. So these are your delta G of hydrolysis reactions. Those are your hydrolysis reactions. Those are defined, that's de by definition. I give you the delta G of hydrolysis, you should be able to write this out and the delta G corresponds to this. Then you look at your goal. You say, okay, in these two, if I compare this reaction to the goal and this reaction to the goal, which one of these reactions <coughs> needs to be flipped? It's the one that in the goal is reversed. So ATP and ADP, left to right, are fine. But here's glucose to G6P, here's G6P glucose, which means this is my flip right here. So whichever one is backwards in the goal reaction is the one you need to flip. All right, so you need to get to here. So by getting to there, you flip this one to make the glucose and G6P on the other sides. And of course, it changes its sign. So if in this case it's negative uh, 15, <coughs> once I flip it, it's going to be positive 15. Of course, this is still negative 30, negative 30, positive 15, negative 15, favorable. All right, so determining which one flip is always figuring out which one in the goal reaction is the other direction. Does that help? Yeah. Well, it depends. If it's a short answer problem, then I'm going to expect to see the work, you know, for partial credit. If it's a short, if it's a multiple choice question, it's up to you how you do it, but make sure you get the right answer. This is the easiest way just to do it. So, so it would be glucose plus phosphate is G6P and water. That would be the... That's the flip of that. We are backwards, right? So this got flipped to that. The sign went from negative 15 to positive 15. Yeah? How do I get this? Yeah. That's a definition. Hydrolysis means the phosphorylated one plus water is the unphosphorylated and the phosphate. By definition, if I give a delta G of hydrolysis of anything, it's the thing with the phosphate plus water gives me the thing without the phosphate plus the phosphate. The first with the water. Yeah, so it said if I say G, if I said I'm gonna give you delta G of hydrolysis of G6 tape, you know that goes in first. And you're gonna add water to it. It's a hydrolysis for that. Gives me, well, what's the other phosphate? Well, that's easy to figure out, it's the thing without the phosphate. And then you always add phosphate because that's the cut off. <laughs> so then that's it's uh that G six P plus six two O is like something we can you know internalize. Yeah, this setup for the reaction, regardless of whether it's G six B, creatine phosphate, succinate phosphate, whatever I want to come up with, it's always that structure. It's always that structure. Yes. It's just different terms, but the same structure. It's always plus water giving you something plus phosphate. Questions on that? Yes, negative 30 plus positive 15, negative 15. 
Yes. That's favorable because delta is negative 50. Yes. We good? All right. Think about it some more. Let's go forward. Uh, talked about the electron transfer compounds. We're going to go some more in the electron transport chain. Four characteristics. I went through these. I described them. Maybe I'll ask you to write them out and describe them also, like I did with Poland's principles. It might be a big hint. You know, part two kind of question. Hint, hint. All right. Um, okay. Moving forward into glycolysis. I am not going to make you reproduce the pathway. However, the questions I'm going to ask and the accounting questions I'm going to ask kind of require you to remember that pathway. So if you want to just puke it out on the back of the exam, and you have it all jumbled in your head and you walk in, and the first thing you do is flip over that exam and go, okay, glucose, glucose 6, phosphate, fructose 6, fine, whatever. I'm not going to grade you on that, but it can be useful. Just write it all out real quick so it's off your brain, and then you can refer to it on the exam. A lot of people do that. But you do have to know those pathways in order to answer the other problems. Yes? Um, are we going to need to know the structures too, or just need the answers? Nah, probably not. Not for, not, for, not for this part. No. Yeah, not all the enzymes. Okay. No, not all the enzymes. There are a couple, well, actually, there's only a couple enzymes I, um, I, I mentioned. Um, and actually, we're not even doing the regulation part, so it's less crucial right now. For some of the differences between glycolysis and glucogenesis, you need to know those. So there's key ones that are mentioned. Those are the ones to know. Okay, let's see. Uh, talked about substrate level possible relation. Well, first, the investment. There were two investment steps. We spent two ATPs to start it. Substrate level possible relation is when you create an ATP right on site. So that's direct creation of ATP in a pathway. We talked about the anaerobic respiration. The whole purpose is to revive and keep that pool of NAD constant. So we're not depleting our NAD reserves and the glycolysis comes to a grinding halt. The products are the humans lactic acid, microorganisms make ethanol and CO2. So but the whole point is under anaerobic <coughs> conditions to keep that NAD flowing. So you're not running out of NAD. So you can keep glycolysis pumping because you know, under anaerobic conditions you're not getting much energy out of a glycolysis to begin with. So you've got to keep that going, otherwise you're getting nowhere. Otherwise you're doing it. Alright. Gluconeogenesis. So basically glycolysis in reverse. Know the again the enzymes that are different between the two pathways. The committed steps are basically those different enzymes. And know the energy requirement. Glycolysis nets you two ATPs, whereas gluconeogenesis costs you six ATP. Okay? All right. And glycogen, I mentioned the two enzymes there. Again, energetic difference. What goes in, what comes out. It costs a UTP to put a glucose in. You don't get it back out. Glycogen synthase, glycogen phosphorylase. All right, those are some of the key points on that. We're good to go so far? Everybody comfy so far? This is, this is basically just memorization of facts and such. Uh, PDH, pyruvate dehydrogenase. The overall reaction is pyruvate to acetyl-CoA. You make NADH. Know your three subunits and all the components that I mentioned. So all that stuff I wrote on the board, commit that to memory. I may ask you to revisit it and bring it back on the exam. And what's the energy you have with well, you get the NADH. Yeah. Yeah. So that's key. And the, the, the NADH you get out of it. And also key is that pyruvate high dehydrogenase is not reversible. That's very important for this step. It's actually very important metabolically. It's very important nutritionally. But that step is not reversible. Once you've gone in, you cannot go back and make pyruvate again. It's not part of that problem. It is not. It is actually set, it is part of aerobic respiration. It occurs in the mitochondria, so it is metabolically and physically separated from glycolysis. It's completely different. It's a whole other step. Even though in that accounting chart, yeah. I show it as another step, it looks like it's part of glycolysis. It's its own step. It's its own new part. All right, citric acid cycle. Again, we're not going to make you remember the structure.
structure is not going to make you reproduce that all. You will have to know it in order to answer the questions, though. So write it down on the back of a page. Be prepared for questions. Um, know the concepts of oxidative decarboxylation. That's what we oxidize to create an NADH, and we lose the CO2. It happens twice in TCA. It also happens in PDH. Even though I don't mention the PDH, it does happen in PDH. So three oxidative decarboxylations total. Of course, those are double that. And there is a substrate level phosphorylation in TCA. That is the GTP formation. That's a substrate level phosphorylation. Okay. Any questions so far? We're almost done. That's not that much on this exam. All right. Electron transport, the redox equations with reduction potentials getting overall potential. It's basically a similar process to this. I give you two reduction potentials. You're going to write me out the. So if I said it was, say, NADH and FAD. And again, the reduction potentials, you know that it's the oxidized plus electrons gives me the reduced. That's a reduction potential. Again, standard definition. Write those out. And then, which one do I flip? Look at my goal. Which one am I going to flip? Mm -hmm. NADH, because look. It's backwards. If it's backwards in the goal, that's the one you flip. Change the sign. So I guess for the oxidation potential. I would never ask for oxidation potential. I'm going to say the reduction potentials are. That's standard. That's that's how everybody talks. Nobody talks oxidation potentials. We just say the reduction no. potential is blank. On the practice, you had reduced, right? What? On the practice problem. I showed one of these, I think I showed it this way or the other way, I forgot which way I showed it. Um, but I always quote reduction potentials, so that's a defined, it's like saying delta G of hydrolysis, it's a defined reaction. You're going to write those, flip the correct one, add them. The only difference is positive E is favorable, negative E is unfavorable, which trips up people up all the time. But it's backwards, so delta, delta G and E are inversely proportional there. No. I'll give it all. I'll give all the piece. There's nothing you have to memorize for this. Yep. Flip it around. Change the sign. And those two, with the change sign, you get your answer. So if this is negative 300, when I flip it, I'm going to add whatever FADH is, negative 250, positive 300, etc. Yes? So anything below zero is always bigger. Anything um, it, but it depends on what you're doing with. So if, if I was doing it the other way, if I did NAD and FADH, those are both negative, but whichever one's more negative is going to be the donor. So it tends from a very negative to very positive. Just because it's below, if it's below zero, it's favorable to donate to say hydrogen, because hydrogen is zero. But it doesn't mean just negative always means favorable, because um, it depends on how they relate to each other. So you see where you're going? No, it's, it's, like I said, if I did this the other way, I'd get a negative 250, I'd have to flip the 250, I'd end up with negative 300 and positive 250. We have a negative 50, which would be unfavorable. They both started out negative, but it's how they relate to each other. If I try to make the 250 donate to the negative 3, not going to work. So it's always in the, the, the relation with the two, and that's why you have to add the reactions together to get your answer. Oh, I see what you're saying. You mean the overall? Yeah. Negative is unfavorable, positive is favorable. It's flipped from delta G. Delta G negative is favorable, positive is unfavorable. E is inverted. So 
whenever when an E is up, G is down. When G is up, E is down. So that because that that negative sign between each other. That's what we did the overall test. No. Okay. Um, know your reduction. Know the path. Which ones donate to which? Complex one and two both come from different sources. NAD for one, NADH for two. They both donate to CoQ to three to four, hence to oxygen. Remember that complex two is actually succinate dehydrogenase, and that is the only one of the complexes that does not pump. Well, the other three pump. That produces the chemiosmotic potential, which is released through ATP synthase. F0, F, F0 the stalk, where the protons go across. F1 is the head, where the ATP is synthesized. Remember this, I love this little thing right here, so you're gonna have to love it too. Ooh. Okay, so this little conversion of energies, different types of energy. Okay. Uncoupling, I mentioned dinitrophenol. This was an unfortunate attempt at uncoupling, though there is an, a controlled, useful uncoupling of um, the uncoupling protein. Oh, just that it transports the protons across. It's, uh, it's, it's sort of an unregulated uh, lipophile that transports the protons across and uncouples the... And know the definition of uncoupling. Uncoupling is basically an alternative path for the protons. And that pr reduces the amount of ATP made with dire consequences in some cases. Okay, accounting problems. Well, we given some of these. They could be in TCA, they could be glycolysis. The last thing that is not on here that will be on the exam is the last thing I covered. I kind of threw it in the last minute. And that's about the conotase and iron response protein. It's its second life. So a conotase, <coughs> which we know, converts citrate to isocitrate, turns into iron response protein when it loses an iron atom. The octonotase is the four iron, four sulfur. The IRP is the three iron, four sulfur. So, we have the dual life of octonotase. Now, IRP <coughs> binds to iron response elements in messenger RNAs. That's the job, it binds those res iron response elements. This then increases the amount of transferrin and decreases the amount of ferritin. Transferrin is our transport. Ferritin is our storage. So that's the fundamentals all about the econotase IRP you have to remember. Basically, that a conotase turns into IRP. IRP binds the iron response elements in mRNAs, which can then upregulate the amount of transferrin and downregulate the amount of ferritin. And of course, the reverse happens. You know, you take the IRP away, and the, thing, the system balances in the other direction. Ferritin goes up, transferrin goes down. Anything else? About the same amount, 25 multiple choice. Four, four to six, short answer, probably more like six. 50-50 um, split point-wise. Anything else? Pretty straightforward.